So basic digital art, I'm going to start out with the hardware that you need, just a basic description and explanation about so hardware, and then software, and then I'm going to go into like how exactly the drawing process works and taking you through a quick digital drawing, you know, step by step by step, very simple digital piece that you might make for your first time doing digital art. So I'm going to be writing down some notes, so feel free to take a screenshot or something if you get like confused or whatever. But we will be starting with just an explanation on hardware. And to start out with, what I use, what I use, I probably need to write smaller than this because I think I'm going to run out of space. See? My handwriting's too big. Okay, so what I use... Think of this as this is my blackboard. Do you guys like my blackboard? <laughs> I use Clip Studio Paint. That's the software that I use. And I have a Wacom one. And that's my tablet. Those are the things that I use to draw. I don't really use anything else. Uh, that's kind of like it but you can kind of use everything, you know. You could start out very simple, like getting a tablet that doesn't have a screen, or you could just draw on an iPad or like a Windows PC with, with the touch screen. I know people that use that. But I'm gonna recommend a few software to start out with. Hardware-wise, hardware you can use an iPad, You could use a drawing tablet of any type. Or you can just use a mouse. Yes, it works. Mice do work. You can use a mouse. I know several artists that use mice and it's like, it's perfectly fine to start out with that, especially if you're just learning how to use software and whatnot. Well, the only stuff I have is an iPad. Well, then you can absolutely use an iPad, Levi. I don't see any reason why not. I use an iPad. When I'm on the iPad, I use Procreate, which I'm going to recommend some software for you guys. So for the iPad, I use Procreate. However, you can also use uh, Medibang and Clip Studio Paint also on the iPad, but I'm going to recommend those for the computer instead. Clip Studio Paint. is what I use on my computer. It is by far the most diverse and strongest digital art software that is available right now. Uh, don't listen to Adobe. <laughs> don't trust Adobe. Seriously, Clip Studio Paint is way cheaper in the long run. You could just buy it while it goes on sale very frequently and you could buy it while it's on sale. It just has so much stuff to use. Animation and manga making tools, etc. It's a really powerful tool. I recommend it. However, if you're looking for something free, I actually recommend Medibang, which I used to use before I bought um, Clip Studio Paint. So you can use Medibang, which is, uh, if you've heard of Fire Alpaca, which is an older software, they actually ended up making Medibang. Medibang is the big free one that I recommend, and it's just, it's a really good program to start out with. There's nothing wrong with it. I just wanted to try out Clip Studio Paint. It was on sale one day and I bought it. I've been using it since. But I do know artists that like continuously use Medibang Paint and it's still, oh, is it called Medibang Paint? It's called Medibang Pro. Is it called Medibang Pro or Paint? I think it might be called Medibang Pro. <laughs> Medibang Pro? I think it's called Medibang Pro. Don't listen to me. Clip Studio Paint's tripping me up. So that's a good start for like hardware, software. Um, my tips will work in any of these three software. These are the three that I have used. Procreate, Clip Studio Paint, and Medibang. I can definitely tell you that this lesson would be universal for those. You just have to find where your tools are and orient yourself. If you guys want a specific tutorial in something like Procreate, 
because I know it's a little bit different than like Clip Studio Paint and Medibank, that's okay, just let me know. But for now, I'm going to be using Clip Studio Paint for this tutorial. Exactly. Don't trust Adobe. I learned that. Yeah. Learn it early. <laughs> Unless your school is offering it, then you could download it. But it's really annoying. Uh, Adobe is kind of a pain in the neck. Okay. But that's what I use for like hardware and software. Tablet wise, a lot of people are always concerned about like tablets. I honestly think that. Um, any standard tablet is fine. I was using an Intuos uh, pen tablet for a long time. One of the ones that just doesn't have the screen. It was super old and I was using it for, for years and it worked perfectly fine, especially at my skill level when I was a kid. But right now I do use the Wacom one. It's cheap and I really enjoy how small it is. So take with that what you will, but there's tons of other options too. You don't have to go with Wacom. Um, the other brand that I might recommend would be like XP Pen. I'll write that down. <laughs> I recommend XP Pen tablets or Wacom. I don't, uh, I don't really know too much about Huion. I haven't really had a whole lot of luck with Huion tablets, so. Maybe one day a Huion tablet will prove me wrong, but right now, those are the ones that I would recommend. So, other than, you know, software and hardware, what's next? You have your tablet, you have your program open, and you're ready to get start started drawing. And the first thing that you're going to be confronted by when you get started drawing is making a document. So, it's, it's a little bit intimidating at first because it looks kind of like math. <laughs> but if you hit, on most software, Procreate's a little bit different, but on most software you hit File, New, and it'll bring you up a new document. If you're in Clip Studio Paint, it'll give you the option to select different document types, but you just want to start with Illustration. I think Medibang might be similar as well. You can start naming your file in here and all that, but I'm going to be explaining a little bit of the hardest and most confusing stuff that people find scary at first, the scariest stuff at first, which would be resolution size and DPI and such. So canvas size, DPI, whatever. One thing that I always say is that if you're having a hard time understanding pixel size to switch to inches, sometimes that helps. I oftentimes draw in inches rather than in uh, pixel, but at the same time, pixel size works fine. So 1920 by 1080, if you're thinking about this computer-wise, 1920 by 1080 is the size of like an HD computer screen. The higher that you get, the better it gets. Oftentimes, uh, your, your software will have a few options here for you to scale around different standard sizes. I always say go bigger and then go down you know, go lower or whatever. Sometimes I switch to inches and I go like, oh, well, I, I know that I want it to print on an eight by 10 sheet by paper, sheet of paper, you know, so I want to type that in inches. You can mess around a lot with these different sizes to get different results. Uh, the one thing that you want to keep in mind is like for printing, what size do you need? I always recommend going bigger because resizing smaller is way easier than going up in size. So start out big and then if it's too big in the end you could always resize to a smaller size later. Resolution scares people too for some reason. I'm only going to be talking about three types of resolution because it's the three that I use which would be 72, 300, and 600. Start out by, with like an explanation on what DPI means. So DPI is dots per inch, or it's also called PPI, which is pixels per inch. So I have mine set right now at 72, which is standard for like web-based images. I don't really use 72 that often, but if I'm trying to post an image onto the web and it's for a future product I might be selling, like for the Kickstarter that I ran, all the images on there, I posted on there in 72 DPI because I didn't want them to get ripped off and stolen. It's a little bit harder to download and steal images off of 
say Twitter, Kickstarter, Instagram, whatever, if you export in 72, it's harder to print those images because they're not proper DPI for printing. The standard print size DPI is like 300. 300 is very standard printing. If you're printing at home, I'd say 300 is fine. I know that most at-home printers can't print higher than that. It kind of maxes out at like 300. But if you're looking to sell product at conventions and you're planning on getting your artwork printed at a print shop, like professionally done, then 600 is the best way to go. Once again, I recommend like starting higher and then working your way down. So I'm gonna set it here as 300, just standard print, whatever. Pa uh, Clip Studio Paint lets you pick paper color. I usually just leave it as white. And here you go, here you have your document. So just to recap. Resolution slash DPI. Nineteen twenty by ten eighty is standard HD. You could really mess around with that. Go up, go down, kind of calculate how much bigger, how much smaller you wanted to go, or just convert to inches. And then seventy two DPI is for print. I mean, sorry, not print. Do not print. It's for the web. 300 DPI is for standard print. And then 600 DPI is for the more high end printing. There you go. So that's what you need to know about resolution, DPI, etc. One of the things that scares people very frequently when it comes to digital art would be, what the hell, how do I know how big I'm drawing? Well, it's pretty easy. You could also just go on the internet if you don't have like a pixel to inch converter built into your software and just Google it if you want. But most software nowadays you could type in the inches instead of the pixels if you really want to. So, you finally have your document opening. You finally have your document open, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> and, wow, there's a lot of things around here. I have the full screen kind of showing. Um, my overlay is in the way, so I might have to hide that at some point during this demonstration to show you guys a few of the other things around here. But this is how I have Clip Studio Paint set up on almost every software that you will find it is all the same you will find all the same tools all the same different types of things levi asks question where the worst art apps for ipad um i don't really know i just wouldn't use anything that doesn't have layers that would be a big red flag if you install an ipad app and for drawing and it doesn't have layers I wouldn't say, it's not, probably not even worth bothering with, in my opinion. The best one on iPad is Procreate. I know that Clip Studio Paint is available on iPad, but I heard it can be a little bit janky. In my opinion, Procreate is worth the investment. It's not that expensive, it's very cheap, and it's like the best that you could possibly use. So everything that you would typically see on a drawing program is available on almost all programs. If you learn one, if you learn how to use one, you'll learn how to use another. How to use layers? Levi, I'm going to cover how to use layers in a few seconds. But I want to start from the very beginning with you guys, which is tools. So, quick rundown of the tools over here. I'm going to drag this out for you to see. I'm not going to be using every single tool. A lot of them I think you guys might need to explore on your own. Otherwise, I'm taking all the fun away from doing digital art from you. Sorry. Here we go. So tools, here are our tools. We got pencil, the brush, pen, which looks like a marker for me, but that's because I got them all mixed up. But the ones that I use the most, I start out with a pencil and then I ink with a pen brush. And then I color in usually with the bucket tool, which I'll show you guys how to use. 
and then I typically shade with an airbrush. So those are the tools that I'm going to be covering. I'm going to be covering the pencil, a standard ink brush, and I'm going to be covering the bucket tool. I'll also talk about the eraser, but I don't really use it that much. I'll show you why in a second. And the airbrush. So let's get started with just some standard drawing. I'm going to teach you guys how to sketch and a little bit here about layers. So my overlay is in the way of the layer uh, view, but I'm going to hide it so that there we go. We lost a bit of our classroom. It was a sacrifice I had to make so I could show you the full panels here. To the right down here I have my layers window. You can see me circling it. Things can get a little bit confusing down here, especially with layer types. I'm going to go over um, a couple layer types today just as a rundown on them, but they're really fun to look at on your own. I don't want to ruin it, the adventure for anyone. <laughs> I just want to get through the very standard stuff. So as you can see, I already have a layer made and the layer behind uh, or underneath the layer that we're currently on is a paper layer, which Clip Studio Paint set up for me. If I get rid of that, the image is now transparent. And when I bring it back, we have another, we have, we got it back the uh, standard looking white sheet of paper look. Okay, so first things first, sketching. I typically sketch in pink. I don't know why. I just see a lot of other artists <laughs> sketch in pink. I see a lot of the big name artists sketch in the pink shade and I'm like, oh, there must be something about pink that, that makes people want to shade in pink. So if you have a tablet, your tablet set up and you have all your drivers installed properly, uh, you're probably gonna come over here and realize that there is sensitivity just like there would be in real life. The harder you press, the harder the line comes down, etc. Unless you don't have a tablet set up, in which case you're using a mouse and it might look like this. That's fine, it's just a different style. You just have to get used to it. If you are using a mouse and you don't have a tablet yet, you actually just lower the opacity a lot and then you get you could start sketching a little bit better and it'll layer up like that and get you some darker lines. A bit easier for sketching if you sketch with less opacity, especially if you're using a mouse. But I, ha I do have a tablet set up, so I'll be teaching you guys how to do it on a tablet. So for a sketch, I didn't really plan out <laughs> what I'd be drawing today, but um, I do have my lovely VTuber avatar here, so perhaps I'll just do a quick sketch of my little VTuber. <laughs> I'll get some get some reference out on my phone and get get sketching, I guess. It's probably gonna be really shoddy though, so don't blame me if it looks awful. So you have your pencil tool selected. A quick thing about tool properties. I'm gonna bring my tool property thing over here. This is your size, so you could change the size of the brush. Uh, this stuff is pretty self-explanatory sometimes, but when you're really starting out, I mean all this shit just looks terrifying. But that is for your brush size. Opacity is how opaque something is, so if I lower it, it looks like that. And if I have it all the way up, it looks more like that. Texture, ignore it. Most of these brushes that you're gonna get, I usually leave the texture the way that it is. For now, I would leave it. The way that it is, texture density is how densely populating that texture image is. It's a little confusing. And then stabilizer, which I don't use when I'm sketching that much as I use when I'm inking. So I'm going to give a better explanation of stabilizer once we get over to inking. But for just sketching, I recommend leaving the stabilizer off. That way your art stays loose. So, you're in a layer, you're in the layer above the paper layer. If you don't know how to make a new layer or you don't have one yet, you just hit new raster layer. Raster is the standard for drawing. Um, I'll do another video on vector maybe in the future, but I don't know enough about vector to make a video on it yet. So <laughs> call me when I figure that one out. But you should be on a layer. You might want to name it. You can name layers. 
if you don't if you get easily confused with a lot of layers or a lot of things happening at once you might want to start out with naming your layers I'll name this one sketch layer I'm gonna bring back the rest of the classroom for now while I uh, sketch out this face so sketching digitally is a, is a lot like sketching traditionally You would just sketch as you normally do. I don't, once again, I don't know why I sketch in pink. You gotta ask the people that sketch in pink why. I do use the eraser for um, when I'm sketching. I don't use it for when I'm lining, which I'll show you guys in a second, but the hard eraser is kind of the standard. You could set it to have like a different size and all the same settings that you would typically give um, your brush, you can also give your eraser. Sorry, my sketching is so bad today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so you say you're sketching and you know that something looks wrong, but you don't know what yet. You might see a lot of other artists do this kind of thing where they flip the canvas around a bunch of times. If you go over here and you hit flip horizontal on Clip Studio Paint, it'll flip the canvas for you. And then you could kind of come in and like edit your sketch and, and fix the uh, anatomy. A lot of people say that, that that works for them. A lot of other people will tell you that it's a myth. <laughs> that flipping your canvas actually does not get you a better looking drawing. I'm on the side of that flipping the canvas helps a little bit. Um, when I'm in the late stages of my drawing, I don't typically use it. But when I'm in the sketch stages, I do think that it actually helps to give fresh eyes to your drawing you know when you're staring at it for too long you might get a little bit confused as to really what you're looking at and you might need a new set of eyes you get used to looking at your errors and they start making sense in your head and then you flip and that's one of the great things about digital art you know if you wanted to do that traditionally you'd have to go and look in like a mirror or something but just keep flipping back and forth until you think that you get the anatomy right. Or if you're someone who doesn't believe in <laughs> flipping your canvas over and over again, then okay, don't don't flip your canvas over and over again. Just just keep it the way that it is. That's fine. If you're a little old school, or is that old school? I don't know. I think it's pretty old school. Okay, one cool thing about digital art that you could do, and. Uh, I'm gonna explain one more tool here because I kind of forgot about its importance, I guess. But this is the lasso tool. It's also called the selection tool. Every art program, good art program, has one. You select it and then you can select what you're trying to grab. And then you can scale and rotate it, resize it, etc. It's really useful for like getting things the right size that you want them to be so you can kind of transform them it's one of those tools that I once again recommend playing around with a little bit but it could be really useful if you think that you have like the wrong proportion somewhere or something that way if your eye is looking a little bit wonky and you just think that it should be a little bit skinnier you could just use that tool come in and, and kind of fix it up. Okay, so let's say that you have a very basic sketch now. <laughs> this took me a, a lot longer than I expected it to. Um, I think maybe my drawing skills are just not with it today. <laughs> so you have your, uh, your sketch drawn out at this point. I did end up using two colors. I oftentimes use more than one color while sketching and that helps me differentiate the different parts of the sketch. So if you just sketch normally with pencil, you probably have a result looking something like this, but in your style, of course. The next thing that I would do to this for a very simple drawing would be to add line art. So I go back over to the layer, to the uh, layer thingy, and I hit new raster layer once again. I also go back to the sketch layer and I lower the opacity down to 50 
This helps make sure that you don't draw on the wrong layer because you'll be able to tell if you're drawing on the wrong layer. If you come over here with your ink brush, it would be gray rather than black. So make sure that you're selecting the new layer that you made. You might want to title it something like inks and you get ready to do your inking. So for inks, I use a variety of brushes, but most of them have been downloaded from the Eclipse Studio Paint uh, shop or brush, you know, catalog that they have. But rather than using one of those, I'm going to actually try to use a brush that they make available to everyone. So I'm going to use the G Pen here. It looks like I've already actually modified the G Pen. So to talk about brush pen settings for inking specifically, Sometimes I turn the anti-aliasing on to this little thingy over here that makes it very pixely. It also makes it easier to bucket fill in the future. So if you're just getting used to doing digital art and you want to have an easier time bucket filling, maybe that is something that you'd be interested in. As you move down this, it gets a bit softer, but we could use the pixely brush. I must have said it that way because I enjoyed using it. So I'm down to use it again, obviously brush size. And the one thing that is most important for inking, in my opinion, would be the stabilizer settings. Like I said, I don't stabilize for my sketches. It helps keep them looser. But I do use a stabilizer for inking. The stabilizer means that your pen um, will lag behind your brush. See how it's kind of lagging? It usually makes it easier to get smoother lines. I do set that up pretty high, <laughs> so... You might want to mess with the settings to see like what's the best for you, like what's the best stabilization settings that you think you'll need, etc. I tend to keep it pretty high and just come in here and start inking. I definitely recommend inking slow, slow and steady, and then try not to like do this. When you ink, try to do it in one big continuous swoop. That's what gives it that cleaner look. And a little bit of a tip. I said before I don't use the eraser tool. That's because I use a transparent brush instead. It's pretty easy to get this in Clip Studio Paint. You just tap this little transparent box right there. It's also available on Medibang. I don't remember how to do it on Procreate, but I'm definitely positive that you can get it on Procreate. What this does is it turns your, cor your current brush's color into transparency. That way you can erase with the brush that you're using right now rather than erasing with the eraser, which looks totally different. It helps keep the lines consistent. And that's the reason why I use it that way. So I usually use the transparent brush to do my uh, erasing on my line art rather than the eraser itself. So when you're lining, make sure to use those big sweeps. I kind of want a thicker brush, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make it thicker. I also don't really like this sketch that much, so I apologize if my art looks like garbage here, but I just wanted to get something out really quickly to kind of demonstrate how things work and how to use different tools. Line art is really tricky um, for beginners. I have to say it's one of the things that like beginners really struggle with when it comes to digital art is the line art. I understand where that comes from but line art is also my favorite thing to do. So if you're really struggling with it I understand and I just have to say that like if you really get good at it it can become, you know, your favorite thing for digital art if you really practice using your line art and getting better at lying down lines. Um, there's a lot to be learned from it and there's a lot that you could do with it, especially when it comes to shadows and stuff. A lot of people like to thicken their lines at certain points in their drawings. I'm not really worrying too much about that right now. I'm, I'm more just worrying about getting the lines down just to demonstrate how digital art works. So I'm not thinking too much here about like, oh, well, the shadow is probably hitting 
hitting from this angle, so I want to make my line art thicker at this angle and at, at this point and whatever. But that's something that you can really start to think about as you get better at line art and as you get better at digital art. It's just some fun things that you get to play with later on, you know, with more practice and stuff. But here, just to teach like how things work, I'm not really thinking too much about it. And as a beginner, and you, this is your first time touching software, you might not think as much about it either. So try not to worry about how your lines look, just get used to laying them down and keeping them straight. The stabilizer should really help keep them straight. Start out with a higher stabilization setting, and then as you get better at drawing, you could lower it, or you could just keep it high. There's nothing wrong with using a stabilizer when you draw. Uh, I did have one professor <laughs> last quarter that like yelled at someone for asking where the stabilizer was in Tune Boom Harmony, and I thought that was really funny. I'm like, come on! <laughs> I was looking for it too, no no no. I mean, it is good to learn how to draw without one, in case you have something like that, where you have a software and you don't know where it might be and, and you need to know or something. But for the most part, a stabilizer is used for all digital art programs. I've never met a digital artist who doesn't use one. And a, lo a lot of digital artists jump into digital art without even knowing what it is. I didn't know what it was for a while. I didn't know that it existed. And when I found out that it existed, I was like, oh, <laughs> I wish I had known that this existed from day one because it is by far like one of the essentials for digital art. Like you really need to know where your stabilizer is and that it can help make your lines much smoother than you <laughs> than you were initially having them because you were trying to just go full ham. You know, although I'm looking at a screen and I'm drawing on a screen and I could see what I'm drawing as if it were on paper, my lines are still never going to be as straight as they were when I was on paper. That's just I, just something about how computers work, I guess, and how art translates over and the drawing process translates. Like, even though I'm looking at my art on a screen right now, it's still, you know, not gonna be the straightest lines for just some reason. I just can't get them to look super duper straight. I don't know really why that is or why that happens, but it's a phenomenon that does in fact happen. So try not to worry about, you know, the, it not being able to use, not use a stabilizer rather than being able to use one. Just don't, don't, just, what are, jumbling everything around, but just don't worry about it. If you need to use a stabilizer, use the dang stabilizer, okay? There's no shame in it. You don't need to tell everyone that you're using one if you're that ashamed of it for some reason. And don't ask your professor where it is. Just, just use it. <laughs> just look for it yourself. Okay, so. The line art is done. It's very obvious where I did not, like, where I gave up with the line art. Because I'm just trying to go very fast for the sake of this, this, like, lesson. But, um, I've got this line art done. I did give up at some point with it and just quickly light it down so I could get to the next explanation about what I'm about to do now. Which would be coloring. Um, so for coloring, I'm gonna teach a little bit of a very simple coloring style here. I'm just gonna show you guys how to bucket fill and lay in color with a brush as I would as, as you should typically do when you're doing very simple anime style art or cartoon style, whatever art animation like. So make a new layer, a new raster layer underneath, here I'll show, make a new raster layer underneath your inks. And once you have that, well, let me bring this back out. I have more discussion to talk about these layers. Once you bring that out, hide your sketch layer. These little eyes lets you hide things. You could hide your sketch layer that doesn't delete it. It just makes it invisible. And then go over to your inks layer and all software pretty much has this. So no need to worry about like, I know the Procreate has it and Medibang and Clip Studio, the ones that I'm recommending have it. 
and you want to go over the little lighthouse and hit set as reference layer. Then you could come under here and when you bucket fill, rather than referencing the layer that you just made, which is the color layer, it references the layer on top. I'll show you what that means here in a moment. So for coloring, I use the bucket fill tool, which is right, let me move my head, right there. It looks like a little bucket. Pretty much every drawing program has one. And then since you have the layer that is your inks layer set as a reference layer, now when you come in here to bucket fill, pick a nice color over from your color wheel. There's also other different color settings, but I like to use this box here and then the color wheel around it. Just a preference. There's different settings for like color selectors and whatnot. This is just the one that I like to use the most. So come in here to your color selector, whatever your color picker of choice is. Pick your color. And then when you come in here to bucket fill, it pretty easily realizes that you have your inks layer set as the reference layer and fills in right there. So come in here and you just fill in everything that you want to fill in with whatever color you have. So my character's skin is pretty gray, so I'm going to come in here and color in everything that needs to be gray, gray. And then for the hair, my hair is pretty black. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use something that's close to black but not completely black. Because if I were to use something that's completely black, it would hide the line art. You wouldn't be able to see my lines as well. So I usually use a darker gray rather than something that's like completely black. And I apologize that I'm just like going through this very fast and not, not doing much uh, care with it. I'm just trying to get the explanation down. For the eyes as well, I have like these reverse eye thing happening so I come in here and I color what's typically the white part of the eye, dark, and leave the what is typically the pupil. Um, I try to get it near white but I never want anything completely perfectly white. I also have these like eyelid, eye, eye shadow things happening down here. Go in and do that come in here and you might want to hide the sketch layer that way you could see what you've colored so far you can make sure that you've colored all the correct things and don't have anything behind and you're gonna start seeing these little thingies I call them crumblies come in when you're zoomed out sometimes they go away but when you're zoomed in you could see them just come in here with your ink brush and color them in manually I recommend. A lot of people color their drawings manually to begin with, and I see some nothing wrong with that. There's tons of different ways to like color your art. You could use the lasso tool, or you could um, color it, you know, as if you're coloring a coloring book. I typically just use the bucket fill, and then I come in with my pen and fix up all this nastiness that was left over by the bucket fill tool. The bucket fill tool has a few settings by the way which I'm gonna explain here as well. There's closed gap which it means that you could set certain gaps to be to, for it to recognize as closed. I'm gonna try to demonstrate this. I don't know if I'll be able to demonstrate it that well but I'll try right up here. I'll just come up here and, and test it out. So say I do this and oh my gosh I left that gap open. If you set close gap and you bring it up or lower it, um, sometimes Clip Studio Paint will close it on its own. See how that kind of works? It closes it on its own, which is pretty cool. And if you do it in the layer below, the reference layer, then it goes behind the lines just like you want. You could see that mine overfills. That's because I have it as um, the kind of, yeah, area scaling. If you have area scaling set up really high, it'll whoops, fill further out than you actually want it to, which helps get rid of a lot of the crumblies. But if you have it set all the way low, it will not fill as much and you'll get more crumblies. So I usually have mine set pretty high just to get rid of some of the crumblies. 
I usually leave it at like 10 and I typically have closed gap off just because with my line art style I'm not usually making a lot of <laughs> open open uh, gaps and so for this character as well I also have this like white strip in front of my hair which you could probably see just from looking at me so if I come in here and I go back into the color layer and I come in and I just do that I'm gonna turn the line art layer off of reference and I'm gonna try to close this into a closed shape so the layer above the ink layer no longer is set as a reference layer so when I come up here and I try to bucket fill this it'll bucket fill it just like that and you can kind of see this like ew like what is that you could really fix that with um the area scaling <laughs> or not sometimes it doesn't work <laughs> Sometimes you need to uh, do it below, other times you just need to come in and just fix it up. Which is typically what I end up doing anyway. I usually just come in here and just- oops, sorry, there's our blackboard. <laughs> come in and just fix up the, uh, the bucket filling. Which is one of the flaws of the bucket filling method, but I find it's like the easiest way to color, typically. For very, just very basic art. I really don't use it that much anymore, like when I'm drawing, but when you're first starting out, I think that the bucket fill tool is one of the tools that everyone kind of uses the most. So I also have a scar on my face, which I'm going to come over here. I'm going to color a little bit warmer and I'm going to try to just lay down a simple thing for the scar that's on my face. There we go. So now I'm going to teach you guys uh, what will make your digital art stand out as a beginner. You know, when you're first starting out, everyone's art kind of looks the same. Actually, I will pop- <laughs> keep this out. I should just keep this here. When you're first starting out, shading has to be one of the things that people struggle with the most. It's the thing that I see people m make mistakes with the most when they start out digital art. But in my opinion, it's one of the coolest things that you could learn, and I'm going to teach you guys my way of shading. So this is the way that I typically do it, and you might find another way to be useful, but this way is my way, typically. So I'm also going to teach you a little bit with layer types here, and how to use the lasso tool more, etc. I've given this demo a couple other times on my Twitch stream and whatnot about how I do my shading. So I'm going to title this layer the shade layer. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick a blending mode for my layer. This is available on Medibang and Procreate as well. And pretty much these settings are universal across all the different uh, programs, which is surprising at first, but it's... they. Artists try to keep it universal across everything, so I usually use a multiply layer or I use the darken layer type as well. I'm going to use the darken one here just because I feel like everyone uses multiply. I usually set it around 30% opacity, so this is an opacity setting as I showed you guys with the sketch layer. If you lower the opacity, it shows up less. Yeah, layer modes allow you to kind of alter the way that a color appears on top of a on top of the color that it's on below it so I'll show you what that means as well I'm going to bring the shade layer and I'm just gonna bring it below the inks layer and I'm going to set it as a clipping mask sorry if I could find which one is the clipping mask setting <laughs> oh man which one is it let's see Da -da -da -da. I do this every time I go to look for it. I'm like, which one is it? It's this one right here. Clip to layer below means that it uh, will just only draw on the layer. How do I explain this? Oh, good night, two fools. I'll see you tomorrow or not tomorrow. Another time, mate. <laughs> Have a good rest of your night. So clipping mask. It's, all, it's called clipping mask. 
clips of your paint just calls it clip to layer below. If you tap it, it means that you can now only draw on the stuff that is on the layer below it. So it clips to the layer below it. It's a little hard to explain, but once I show you how I use it, you'll see in a second. So for shading, for picking a color to shade with, the most standard color that I see people use is this dark blue in this range right about here. You can use that. I also see people use it similarly, but like in the more red range. Really depends on the mood that you're trying to go for and what the rest of the colors of your drawing are. I'm going to pick this blue just because I see it most frequently come up for other artists who also use it. So standard cell shading with this is pretty fun. And my technique that I use for shading is... I don't see a lot of other people use it and that... I. Sometimes I feel like maybe I'm missing something, or maybe I'm ahead of the game on something, but <laughs> this is the way that I shade. I take my lasso tool and I make sure that I have the add selection tool, and uh, in Procreate it's a little bit different. You just hit, there's like a little bar at the bottom and you could just add selections as you go. You might need to hit a few buttons to figure that out, but for Clip Studio Paint this is how you do it. So you come into the lasso tool and I'm gonna just come in here and I'm going to select all the parts that I want to be shaded. This takes a little bit of knowledge about like art <laughs> art in order to do but I'm gonna start out with just a little chunk right here just to show you guys what I mean by like how this layer mode works and and how I use the airbrush tool that I mentioned before to shade. So I use a soft airbrush tool to do my very basic shading. When I'm doing a massive illustration that takes me months usually, I always start out my shading with this airbrush method. I use a very big brush and I come in here with a... These are the settings that I use. I don't really matter. It doesn't, doesn't really matter too, too much what you use, but I'll make sure that it's the soft one. And then I come in and I just kind of... lay it down slowly. The more that you press, the darker it is. The less that you press, the lighter it is, and you could also layer it on, kind of. So you see how that kind of, like, shades it, you know? And the cool thing about the airbrush tool is that you could do quite a bit with that in mind. Like, if I were to just take this whole chunk here, this whole, this whole underside of the hair. We're doing like pretty serious cell shading. Like I'm just going where the shadows are going and shading underneath them. I apologize if this is sloppy. I'm not trying to make it any accurate or anything because it's just supposed to be a quick, quick drawing. So <laughs> I'm absolutely like got some mistakes going on here, but that's fine. So I come in here and I take my airbrush tool and I just layer it in where I think it needs to go, right? So now you kind of got this shade and because of the airbrush tool you also kind of have this nice hard gradient going on, this soft hard gradient that gives it this effect that I really like to use. It's just the way that I enjoy using it. You could also come in and see how like the eye is way too dark. You could switch over to that uh to that transparent brush and come and airbrush in the highlights back in to the eye to like get rid of things that you don't like. So if I was just starting out I would just shade where I think like the shadow most likely goes or if you already have a very distinct knowledge about how shadows work and the face and whatever you could come in here and you could really um, lay down where you think everything goes. I don't really like what I did with this lip here. I think it looks really cartoonish. <laughs> but, hey, whatever. <laughs> it's fine, it's too late. So like under the chin, got a little bit of a shadow there. And then under the neck, maybe. Like I typically already shade a lot with my black line art, but I do add it in with the uh, airbrush tool as well. My ears are very cast in shadow. So this is like my secret basic shading style that I have. 
<laughs> it's not very secret anymore. Nor was it ever really secret. It's very basic. It's just like... I use the airbrush tool. And that's my secret. This is probably the only legitimate tip that I've given this entire uh, video because... All of this other stuff is very basic knowledge and then all of a sudden I'm like throwing at you guys my my like tip for how to how to do this secret shading style that I have. I'm sorry if you hear the thunder by the way it's totally it's not even raining out it's just thundering out there's no rain. So yeah that's that's like where my my uh, shading style comes from. I'm gonna teach you guys a couple other layer modes here as well before I end this little lesson because there's a few other things that you could do and I'm gonna just show you guys that so similarly if you want to do highlights you can come in here and for highlights I usually use the add thing I don't really uh, always do highlights for very simple art when I do I do use the add and I typically grab like a really light yellow and I and then I do the same thing. <laughs> There's other ways that you could play with this. And then I lower the opacity down to 30, sorry. I usually lower the opacity down to 30. I don't know why. It's just my sweet spot, I guess. See, like I don't really like how the yellow looks with uh <laughs> with the character, but you know, it's all about playing with these different layer types. That's really where the the strength of digital art lies, is with its different types of layers that you could use and stuff. That's where you really get a lot of experimentation and stuff. So if you're looking for a reason to do digital art, do it because you want to learn how to use different layers. That's the real reason why you should be doing digital art. <laughs> It's because the layer types are insane. There's so many different things that you could do and that you could learn with. So that's kind of just the add uh, tool. You could also use it on the skin. I've just been using it on the hair, but say I want to like get a highlight on the nose. I could come in here with my lasso and then bring it in with the airbrush as well. And now I kind of got a little highlight there. People also like put highlights in the little eye corners and then sometimes they put it on the bottom lip too. So maybe I want to add some of those. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Now you have a very simple, simple drawing. So that's basically how to do digital art. Cell shading with a multiply slash darken layer. You got your inks. I taught you guys how to use stabilizers and whatnot. I taught you all about pixel sizes and whatnot here. Feel free to screenshot this. <laughs> I'm gonna show you quickly just how to export as well because since we're here I might as well show you that. Right now I have the paper uh, hidden. You could bring it back or you could keep it hidden if you want. I'm gonna keep it hidden because I'm gonna show a little bit about how to export as a transparent PNG which is also important for digital art. So if you want your drawing to have no background and you already have this kind of like speckly, gritty pattern going on, that means that it's ready to be exported as a, uh, as a PNG that is transparent. PNGs are the only file type that has to be transparent. I mean, that can be transparent, I think. Please don't take my word for it, but I'm pretty sure that PNGs are the ones that are transparent. So hit PNG and then you could just save it. I'll save this as class class art and then save as a png hit save it's going to ask you all this stuff about exporting i usually just try to keep it at 100 percent you could also just hit save as and that's fine too all right here's a little preview wow isn't that nice and okay so that's how you save as a png you can also save it as a JPEG or, or etc. That will usually make it so that your background isn't transparent. JPEG is usually a step down from PNG. Yeah, I, I'm never seeing anyone touch TIFF 
or BMP or Targa, however, Photoshop document? Why is this here? We're not in Photoshop. Well, let me tell you a little bit something about Photoshop documents and how you can use them. So I'm going to save it as a Photoshop document. Class art, and then it should save it as a PSD. Save. All the same stuff you see exporting as a Photoshop document. Now, say I want to open a drawing. How am I going to explain this? <laughs> it's getting a little bit confusing to explain. Photoshop documents are pretty much universal across most art programs. That includes animation programs and also After Effects as well. So I know that we're not in Photoshop, but a Photoshop document is useful, say, if you're trying to bring your drawing from Clip Studio Paint to Procreate, or from Procreate to Clip Studio Paint, or from Procreate to Photoshop, or from Clip Studio Paint to After Effects, or whatever. If you're trying to bring a, a drawing and you want to retain all of its layers, meaning all the different parts broken up, because when you have this PNG, it just looks like an image. But if you export as a Photoshop document, you basically have this raw file version of your drawing that you can open up into another software. So if I, did I save it as a Photoshop? Yes, I did. I'm gonna open a Photoshop document to show you what I mean. So I come into my image folder and if I were to come down here and see, I have a Photoshop document right here titled Same Chi. No, 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 not that one, not that one. <laughs> I have this one, Fee 2.0 Raw. There's also the Clip Studio Paint file, but I also export it as a PSD in case I wanted to work on it on a different software, such as Live 2D or whatever Procreate. If you're bringing one drawing from another, from one software to another software, export as a Photoshop document, and you might be surprised because when you open it up, all of your layers are retained from the previous software. This is why blending modes and, and all this stuff is really universal for every software, because documents need to be opened by usually multiple artists across different softwares. If you're working on a project and you have Clip Studio Paint and your friend has Procreate and you're trying to work on this illustration together, that's the reason why Photoshop document is supposed to be universal and that's the reason why these softwares are very universal so that you can easily translate over from one program to another from one person to another etc so all these blending modes that you see are the same in almost every software that you go into and so are all the tools etc it's all really similar so try exporting in a Photoshop document if you're trying to bring it into another software. That includes After Effects and such. That that gets into a little bit of confusing territory, but if you're trying to make a video or an animation and you want to export all your layers separately, but in the same document, you can import a Photoshop document into something like After Effects or Toon Boom Harmony or um, live 2d if you're making a vtuber like this this drawing is for that's kind of an explanation on that <laughs> so i hope this wasn't too confusing i'm glad that we got this drawing done and i hope that this has helped anyone that doesn't know anything about digital art you know if you're completely lost i hope that this helps even a little bit i tried watching some other videos on tutorials on digital art and i tried adding some of my own stuff that not a other not a lot of other people have added and i also tried dumbing it down a bit <laughs> in case people are finding the typical tutorial to be too confusing but i hope this was helpful and if there are any questions just like let me know comment it in the youtube comments section or come into twitch and let me know on Twitch, but thank you for joining class. I'm gonna end it here.